Hey everybody, welcome to How to Thumbcraft. Let's jump right into it because we've kind of got a lot to cover today. Now I'm sitting here in the nether because I want to talk about Ikorium and Ikor and stuff like that. What is Ikor? Well, it's the actual in-game stuff. Well, it is if you have Thomic Tinkerer on. But uh, it's better than pretty much anything else. Period. But to make Ikor, you need another star. And to get another star, you need to fight a wither. And to get a wither, you need wither skulls. So, let's grind some withers. The thing about withers is that if you just have a normal skeleton spawner and put it in the nether, it'll spawn wither skulls. But grinding in the nether is a little difficult, so I made up this grinder here. Get down. The design is based fairly closely off of a design I found for a blaze grinder. They fun the mobs funnel down to the bottom and when they hit the bottom they hit those pressure plates and get shoved into the bottom hole. Now then, I added a little little bit of a change. This thing right here is called the Siren's Lure. It's found in Automagy. Basically what it does is it it forces any mobs in the area to walk towards it, whether they want to or not definitely speeds things up. Not gonna lie, that's going to happen a lot. But, the basic design is fairly simple. Now, at least if you've tinkered with the redstone a bit or find the tutorial I did, I set up this hopper hawk here just to catch the things that wind up on the stairs. But down here, we have our auto grinder set up. Wait for a skeleton to drop down so the golems can handle it. Come on, I know I'm in range. There should be skeletons dropping. There they go. Okay, the thing about golems is if with the guard core on, they'll attack automatically. And with those visors on, sorry, forgot that if I right click on them, it brings them up. But with the visors on, they'll drop, any mobs they kill will drop experience orbs, which are eaten by these brains in a jar, which can store experience. And then a thing called an amnesiac stone and soul stone, which are found again in auto magi here. What that allows is long-term experience storage, but let's show that off a little bit. It, it's a little off-topic, but I like how, how I set this up. Okay, brains in a jar eat experience, sitting on top of the soul stone, and if you touch soul stone, experience shoots everywhere. But next, no, amnesiac stone. Soul stone, if it's next to an amnesiac stone, which also has a brain in a jar on top, will surely slowly uh, share the experience between them and then this experience will drip out into this jar down here. And each jar can hold about 75 levels of experience. Anyway, down here, under the item grate floor, I've got golems here gathering up all of the dropped items. And in here, wither heads. Wither skeleton skulls. Quite a few of them. Uh, just a quick note, if you if you want to speed things up, you can go without the auto, without the golems, and use this from the Botania add-on, the Elementium Axe, which is available after you open the portal to Alfheim. Because if you chop up skeletons with your pretty pink fairy axe, it'll have a much higher chance of dropping dropping heads. Anyway, now that I've shown this off, back to the surface world. Okay, we're back down here in our boss arena, and we've set up our wither containment area. Hold on, let me get... I like using warded glass because it's always indestructible all the time, and you can break it and move it yourself if you want. Now then, to make a wither, it's just soul, stand, soul sand in a T formation, and three wither 
skulls. And before he explodes, gonna block that up. And the fight is on. But since he's in an indestructible glass case, he can't do anything to me, and I just break a murder hole open and... Oh, come on. And dead. What we get is this book, which is from another add-on that's it part of the pack, and another star. Now, what do we do with that another star? We make stuff. Up to our infusion altar. Okay. Up here, the recipe to make Ikor. Back down in Thomic Tinkerer. You need another star in the center, a diamonds, an eye of ender, and a ender and nether shard. Now the ender and nether shards are rare drops from zombie pigmen and endermen. So I don't have any advice on grinding them, you just have to find them and kill them. Then once you have all of those together, you need human, light, and spirit in fairly large amounts so I've got more than enough here but uh, just in case and run it and you're gonna want your infusion altar to be very stable like probably more stable than mine is even well actually no for this part mine is more than stable enough but how's that reaction doing Okay, good. Seems to have gotten all of the Ascentra. And... There we go. Eight pieces of Ikor. Oh, shoot. Something that I forgot to mention is that the research for Ikor doesn't show up until you've researched literally everything else. So, use those, those uh, knowledge fragments from the Outer Lands to good use, because you need to research everything, and finish the research, and then you can research Ikor. But now that you've got Ikor, you can make all sorts of neat stuff, like Ikor Cloth, and then the, turn those Ikor Cloths into the best armor in the game, and turn that best armor in the game into even better armor. But just a warning, all of the really good stuff with the Ikor is really, really expensive and dangerous and hard to make. But it's really good. Like, you can fly forever with the ropes of the stratosphere, even without creative mode. And all sorts of neat stuff. Also, you can make it you can make Ikorium metal and that makes the best weapons and armor and also wand caps and Iker strapped wand core which can hold a thousand vis so basically what I'm saying is Ikor is mad busted just completely broken and the and the items you can make out of it are insane 
Let's just take a look at these real quick. Awakened Icorium, and just to show you some of the recipes, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to have to set them up, but so many items. So dangerous. Spend a lot of time stabilizing your infusion altar before you attempt them. But let's go with the shovel first. There's normal mode, where it's a normal shovel. There's square mode, where it breaks a 5x5 five five block. And then there's column mode, where it breaks the entire column. Booyah. The pickaxe, which it's got normal mode, a square mode, which works pretty similar. And a line mode. Voila. Neat, huh? There's the awakened pickaxe, the well, axe, normal. It's got the normal mode, square mode, which hits square things again. And entire tree mode, which I'm actually going to pop into into survival mode to show you show this off. Bam! Tree's just gone. Wait for it, things are going to start dropping soon. Yep, there goes the decay. That's more like it. Anyway, last thing, Awakened Decorium Sword. It's got normal mode. Area mode, which hits all the enemies in the same area. And soul mode. What soul mode does is... Well, you see those gray hearts under my hunger bar? Those are soul hearts. Hold on, I'm gonna get beat up a little bit first. <sighs> it's hitting my runic shield. See? The soul hearts went away instead of my normal hearts. Now I hit him... And each hit gives me a half an extra heart. They're single use, but you can get a lot of them that way. A uh, quick run over of the kind of things that... Hold on. Okay, Boots of the Horizontal Shield. Extremely smooth movement, like Boots of the Traveler, and <laughs> just go ahead and read the sort of things you get from these. Pretty neat, huh? Anyway, that's Ikor, and again, it's massively broken. But it's really fun if you can get to this point. And uh, that just about does it for my How to Thomcraft videos, so I hope you enjoyed watching these, because I kind of enjoyed making them. And uh, I guess I'll see you next time with whatever I do next. Bye, everybody.